uh, yesterday was a, an incredibly valuable uh, day for me personally, learning about the specific experiences of people on the ground. Um, and um, I, I think some of you have probably heard of the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves. Um, I work on gender and markets within the Alliance, um, which is an initiative of the UN Foundation. And the UN Foundation actually does have um, other work that's more broadly on energy access and are working very closely with the UN on the Sustainable Energy for All campaign for the following year. Um, if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer uh, questions about that campaign as well. Um, but this will focus on what we're doing through the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves. Um, I'm not going to spend any time on this because we all know the issues. Um, but the Alliance is really focused on um, making an impact around these um, different types of issues, um, around the health issues um, that women are disproportionately affected, <laughs> the high opportunity costs, and the, the ways that the environment is impacted through um, uh, dirty cooking practices. Um, why is the Alliance uh, sort of coming about now and being focused on um, currently, we really felt that there was some renewed momentum happening in the space. <coughs> so there's been development of new stove technologies. You can see some of them along the bottom there. Um, there have been some very interesting innovations in clean cooking technologies within the past couple of years, including, you can see down there, an ethanol stove that's being distributed in humanitarian settings, um, different kinds of rocket stoves, stoves with attached fans, solar stoves. So there are different kinds of technologies that are now available to the user. There's been a renewed interest um, by the private sector in the base of the pyramid, and so we want to tap into that interest. There's been a convergence of new players and different kinds of approaches, so new interesting kinds of stakeholders getting involved in the space. There's been the availability of carbon um, financing and other kinds of innovative financing that we really want to tap into and use to build the markets. Um, there's been stronger empirical evidence that shows the health and environmental impacts. Um, some of you might be familiar with the work of Kirk Smith in the study that was just released that really finally makes the connection in a very scientific way between cook stove or indoor air pollution and the negative health impacts on the women and children that are breathing it in. And there's now um, some renewed ownership and excitement at the national country level. The Alliance has over 15 country <coughs> partners where the governments have signed up specifically to partner with the Alliance to, to work on cook stove projects within their country. So the Alliance is an innovative public-private partnership to create a thriving global market for clean and efficient cook stoves and fuels. Our mission is focused around saving lives, empowering women, improving livelihoods, and combating climate change. And we um, are taking a market-based approach. Uh, we believe that a thriving global market will lead to these, will have these four impacts and will create a sustainable market that um, will hopefully be thriving on its own. Um, we are technology and fuel neutral. And so we are focused on the technologies and fuels that work best in the settings um, that people are working in um, and that the user is dictating. So we support our partners, um, our people, our stakeholders from all different kinds of technologies um, and fuels. Our vision is to have universal adoption of clean and efficient cooking solutions, but we've set a key milestone of 100 million households adopting and using clean and efficient cook stoves and fuels by 2020. <coughs> Um, the Alliance has a very specific approach to reaching this 100 million goal uh, set out in three phases over the next um, nine years. We have over 240 partners. We are about a year old. We launched last year at the Clinton Global Initiative with Hillary Clinton making the announcement um, that the U.S. government had committed $50 million to the cook stove sector. Um, since then, we've raised over $80 million for the sector. Um, uh, through these different donor countries, you can see some of them listed here, and some of them are some of them are in this room. Um, we have private sector donors such as Dow Corning, which has just come in with a five million dollar unrestricted gift for the alliance. We have NGO donors like private foundations, the ones that are listed here, as well as hundreds of others of implementing NGOs that are on the ground as partners. 
And then, as I mentioned before, we have about 15 or so national partners, which are country governments who have specifically signed up as partners for the alliance or with the alliance to commit to creating action on the ground in their country around these issues. So the, the need for an alliance, uh, when we first started doing our exploratory work around creating this alliance a few years ago, was really because there seemed to be a lack of a comprehensive vision and strategy um, that everyone was working under to address household cooking energy issues at scale. And so while there was a lot of activity going on and a lot of very good work, we wanted to bring everyone together under one umbrella to be working under one cohesive strategy. Um, there was really limited awareness, and still is, of this issue by high-level policymakers, donors, and private sector players. And so one of the roles that we've been able to play is bringing on different kinds of champions, like U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, actress Julia Roberts, celebrity chef Jose Andres, to really be going out, raising awareness of the issue, um, uh, generally in the public, uh, but also um, Hillary Clinton has obviously been an amazing advocate by raising awareness of the issue um, and the <coughs> negative impacts of this issue to high-level policymakers. Um, there's really been an inadequacy of funding in the sector in order to reach scale, particularly when you compare it to other issues um, that have similar impacts like malaria, HIV, etc. And we really want to bring the funding up to par with those other major global issues. And it's really a wide range, as I'm sure all of you know who work on cook stoves, of complex barriers that really require a coordinated cross-sectoral response. And while um, some of you might be familiar with the Partnership for Clean Indoor Air, which was um, a program from the US EPA that was a, an umbrella group of all of the practitioners working together under one strategy, it was really for practitioners, and so we've merged with them, and now we are partners with, we are merging with the Partnership for Clean Indoor Air, but able to bring in other stakeholders like donors, <coughs> UN agencies, country governments, um, and private sector players that the Partnership for Clean Indoor Air was not able to bring in because of, um, they're a part of the US government, so they had some challenges. So we've merged with them, so we're all working under one coordinated strategy. So this is the strategy. Um, there are copies of it on the back table. Um, this is our report that we've just released last month called Igniting Change. Um, it was the culmination of a process uh, over the past year where we brought together 350 experts from all over the world to talk about different um, specific issues within the sector. So there were 11 working groups on <coughs> topics such as carbon finance, finance and investment, gender, health research, climate, reaching the consumer, um, monitoring and evaluation, etc. And the 11 working groups were asked to do two things. Uh, the first thing we asked them to do was to come up with some recommendations around early actions. So things that the sector could do immediately that would have an immediate impact <coughs> if they uh, could get done and get some funding immediately. And then the second thing they were asked to do was to come up with, to identify <coughs> the four or five main priorities or barriers within their topic area that needed to be addressed for the sector to really reach scale, for a thriving global market to really be created, and then to name specific recommendations under those priorities that the sector should take on to really create this market. And so this report <clears throat> is a culmination of all of those working group recommendations. Um, it, it's, it's also, it plays two functions. It's also uh, meant to tell the story of cook stoves and the need for this thriving global market to those who don't know much about cook stoves. And so um, the report is, is really a strategy for the entire sector and we hope that all of our partners, all of our 240 partners, will start working under this, this one strategy. Um, and so <clears throat> the Alliance was then taking this strategy, extracting the pieces that the Alliance will specifically take on and creating its own business plan. So this just summarizes some of the strategies that are outlined in the Igniting Change report. The strategy is um, three-pronged. It's around enhancing demand, strengthening supply, and fostering an enabling environment. And I've just put in red here some of the ones that have um, very specific uh, gender issues, although we'll be looking at all of the priorities of the Alliance with the gender lens, but these ones um, are just obviously going to need um, some serious gender actions. So under enhancing demand, we, uh, this is the strategy for the entire sector, so this is not a commitment 
Um, the Alliance will not take on all of these things, but this is for the entire sector. So understanding and motivating the user as a customer, <clears throat> reaching the last mile, financing the purchase of cook stoves and fuels, developing better cook stove technologies and a broader menu of options for the user, under strengthening supply, really financing clean cook stoves and fuel businesses at scale, accessing carbon finance, building an inclusive value chain, gathering better market intelligence for the businesses and projects, um, and ensuring access for vulnerable populations, um, including humanitarian settings. And then under the enabling environment, really promoting international standards and rigorous testing protocols. Um, as uh, most of you probably know, there are no standards that define what is a clean and efficient cook stove. And so we've been working um, through the International Standards Organization to put together a tiered, <coughs> excuse me, a tiered standard with the um, stove community that will um, go through the ISO process and be hopefully voluntarily adopted by the countries which have signed up as partners of the Alliance. And then you'll be able to see exactly where the different types of stove technologies fall within the standard. And the standard is tiered and meant to improve upon over time. So we're not naming winners or losers, but we want to be clear which stoves do what and be clear about the claims that people make around efficiency and emissions and then help people improve their stoves to slowly improve uh, the quality of the stove over time. We also champ want to champion the sector to build awareness, and so um, obviously the Alliance has been focused on this over the past year by bringing on um, some of these well-known champions um, and garnering press and attention. Um, the sector really needs to further document the evidence base. While um, Kirk Smith's study did come out recently around the health impacts, um, there need to be other scientifically rigorous studies around health, climate, and gender to really make the case um, within the sector. Um, and to the and to others, uh, actually. Um, and we need to engage national and local <coughs> stakeholders and develop credible uh, va monitoring and evaluation systems. So the Alliance, um, as I mentioned, will be taking the sector strategy report, extracting uh, the pieces of the strategy that it will take on specifically. Um, and we will be taking on priorities that we feel fit within the Alliance's value proposition. So we, we understand that our partners are already doing a lot of amazing work and we don't want to duplicate efforts and uh, we, don't want to, uh, we don't want to take on anything that people are already doing really well. But we feel like uh, the Alliance has a specific value around these uh, few items here. So catalyzing the sector and brokering partnerships, enabling the markets, championing the issue, mobilizing resources, promoting these standards, and coordinating the sector knowledge and research. And we'll be doing this in a phased approach, as I mentioned. And you can see here what the main broad goal is for each phase. So in order to do this, the Alliance realizes that although we're global, we will need to focus in on specific countries, at least in the first phase. And so we've gone through a rigorous data analysis to come up with the countries that are falling into these categories. And so focus countries are countries um, that the Alliance feels uh, its role will be transformative by going into the country um, it will, we will commit to going in over the long term. There will be multiple inter intervention strategies and actions that need to be addressed. And through our data analysis, uh, we've come up with the countries that are likely, um, that we will likely target in, in the box next to it there. The East African region, we're treating those countries sort of as a block and we'll work together with them, Bangladesh and Vietnam. And I should also say that these next few slides are from the Alliance Business Plan are, and still in draft. And so uh, none of this is finalized, um, but I wanted to share it with you because we will be publishing this at the end of the month. Um, but that's why you see question marks because it's still a work in process. So active countries are countries where there's already a market that's very active, but that there could um, be a lot of benefit by having a surgical intervention in one or two areas. And so we're gonna work with these countries and the stakeholders within these countries to identify what are some of the main barriers that need to be addressed and how can the Alliance come in and mobilize its partners and resources to help address one or two uh, serious barriers, but not looking at the entire market in these countries. Um, and you can see here some of the countries that are falling into this category. And then the last tier are really all of the other partner countries, all of the other country governments who have officially signed up to the Alliance. 
and we will be providing them with general tools. Um, we'll be, we can create country toolkits for them, broker partner, partnerships, um, and really for all of these countries, we want to be able to extrapolate the best practices and the learnings and, and apply it broadly for, for everyone to be tapping into. This just shows you a little bit um, of the data analysis that was done to get to the result of those countries on the previous slide. We looked at a bunch of different factors. Two of my colleagues um, did the analysis. We looked at indicators around potential impact, scalability, the opportunity to test innovative business models, um, the ability to leverage other resources. So we have donors that are specifically interested in certain countries. There are, there are countries that have uh, you know, already a lot of partner action um, where the UN Foundation may already be working and greatest need. Um, so just to mention a little bit um, some of the activities that the Alliance is undertaking to really mainstream gender throughout all of its programmatic activities. Um, we've identified a gender focal point. We had a gender cross-cutting <coughs> committee that was the working group that was focused on gender and it was um, meant to not serve just as a working group but every working group had one member that served on that working group and on the cross-cutting committee to try to integrate gender into the recommendations of the other working groups. Um, we will be defining and distributing gender-informed best practices for stove businesses um, that, that really um, are very keen to take on this kind of thing but maybe don't have the expertise or the capacity to do it themselves. Um, we'll be putting gender requirements and RFPs if appropriate. We'll be doing baseline assessments in the focus countries, um, doing some gender action planning for the Alliance and its partners. Um, we have specific partner engagement strategies for organizations that are focused specifically on gender and empowerment. And we're working on gender-informed m and &E and developing our frameworks currently um, and uh, thinking through some of those things. So this slide might be a little bit difficult to read, but I wanted to give you some detail. Again, this is from the business plan and it's a draft, but this is the overarching um, uh, priorities for the alliance and then the business plan then has uh, many other slides after this that go into a lot greater detail about each priority. But I wanted to give you an idea about what the alliance has decided to do in phase one around its priorities and um, show you how we'll be looking at gender within the specific priority. So for example, under enhancing demand, we've made a commitment to looking at stove social marketing, and um, that has obviously a huge gender component. So one of the components of the stove social marketing priority is doing some research around what are the, the former attempts at stove social marketing, what's succeeded, what hasn't, and we'll be looking specifically at what was the process that, that was gone that was undertaken to produce those marketing materials? Was it specifically marketed to women and men separately? Was there any care taken to understand the needs of women and men separately with these marketing materials and really having a gender approach when looking at this kind of thing? Um, the Technology Innovation Fund, for example, we would like to start raising money for a fund that um, technology R&D um, scientists can really be tapping into to uh, make stove technologies um, even better around combustion chambers, etc. But there will be a component of this fund that also is very specifically designed to help these engineers connect with the user needs. So not just giving it to people, scientists in the lab who are looking at ceramics and materials, but uh, giving them the tools so that they understand how to best approach the user and input, get the user's input into design um, and making that connection for them. Um, just one other example for the strengthening supply, we're going to be working with the SAFE Task Force to implement its recommendations. Um, if you don't know what the SAFE Task Force is, it's um, the interagency, the UN Interagency Task Force that was formed to address uh, safe cooking fuel in humanitarian set situations, and they've come up with a list of recommendations to protect women um, from being attacked and from other uh, facing other kinds of dangers while out collecting fuel in humanitarian settings. And so they have a, a, a whole list of recommendations, but they need help with financing and capacity to implement them. So we'll be working specifically with the two chairs of that task force, the Women's Refugee Commission and the World Food Program, to identify a particular humanitarian setting to start piloting some of the approaches that they've recommended um, to protect women, um, women and men while they're out collecting, uh, collecting fuel in these um, dangerous settings. 
So that's uh, that's it. The Alliance will be rolling out the business plan um, starting in January for a series of meetings all over the world. So if you're interested in um, learning more or getting information about the final business plan, um, uh, give me your contact information and I'll make sure that you are um, looped in and sent the business plan, but also invited to the, the meetings that will be happening regionally. Thank you.